The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of Around the OAA. I'm one of the hosts of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminus and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube and also those watching on Oriented Television. A lot to talk about this week, obviously. Um, regards to football, we just ended week six. We're going to be heading into week seven this week. So, obviously, a lot to look at. Um, some champions might be crowned by the end of the week. Um, last week of um, red play this week, last week of white play this week. Um, and the blue and gold are in their crossovers heading into um, for week seven this week. So we got a lot to look at this week, a lot to recap, a lot to, um, you know, I, everything's starting to figure themselves out this week. Um, give my personal thoughts and opinions on certain teams, um, some teams I'm really high on, some teams I'm really concerned about. Um, let's look at, obviously, the big stories around the league, obviously. Um when you look at what Seaholm did um, this week to Troy, um, Troy was basically playing on the edge. Um, and they were just throttled by Seaholm, 52 nothing um, in that one. Got to give a lot of credit to the players there. I think Ro- Kyle Robbins, he had a big game. He had a um, kickoff return for a touchdown. He got a... Um, he caught a pass for a touchdown. Um, both Kinney brothers were outstanding in that game. Um, to me, when you look at the class of that division in the blue, um, Seaholm is clearly the class in that division. Um, Troy, on the other hand, I knew coming in they'd be playing with fire. Um, when you really look at in that game, um, I couldn't trust him offensively. Um Coming into that game, I mean, I, yes, they had Darius White, they did, you had um, Nolan Block um, at running back, and then you had, I think it was Vandenberg was at quarter, Brandenburg was at quarterback. Um, you kind of knew it was, this was coming. Um, I mean, and also the Troy defense, really, yes, they were been really good all season long, but Seaholm put 52 on them. You know, they got running clock on them. Um, that really says a lot right there, but also it tells me that, you know, that coach Chris Frazier was not prepared to handle the Veer offense that Seaholm ran and it showed. So when I look at, you know, when I look at that game, recapping that game, it was really, you know, that was a domination by Seaholm. It really was in that game. I mean, so when you look at, you know, the class of the blue right now, Seaholm, you know, is right now the cream of the crop in that division. Um, other games in that division, obviously, North Farmington knocking out Troy Athens 28-7. to I think a big reason why was Ryan Shelby being back. Um, when you really look at North Farmington and, you know, the fact that Shelby was out most of the year, um, that really says something. Um, what Shelby brings, obviously, he brings a dual threat. Um very good in the air. Again, I mean, like, he, he was only 10 for 15 for 182 yards. Um, that's not a bad night for you. You know, that's really not. Um, you know, and then, you know, with with North Farmington, you know, when you look at them, um, I still think the defense is still a problem with them. Um, and I'm going to be flat out honest with you. I just don't know where, you know, were what they would have been like had Shelby played the whole season. Um, you know, obviously with um you know, obviously when you look at farming with when you look at North Farmington, you know, you look at could they could he have played against Caledonia? Um would the score have been much different in that game? I really feel like if Shelby played in that game, I think the Groves game's different. Um the Farmington game could have gone either way. Um, the C home game, maybe that one could have also gone either way as Shelby played, but not, but not knacking on their um, quarterbacks, um, obviously. But um, but Shelby makes a difference for that team. I mean, for Coach John Hurst and his team. I mean, like he it clearly does. And you really look at what C home, what um, 
I wonder what Farmington did in that game against Athens. They controlled the clock, controlled the game. Shelby played well, but also was a clash of different styles. So when you really look at recapping that game, um, for North Farmington, there is a path for them now. Um, but they got to win out, obviously. I mean, you still got, I mean, like, I mean, you got Avondale this week. That's a big one for you. You got to win that one. Lake Orient's a big one for you if you want to win that one. And then you close out there with Bloomfield Hills. So, you know, so when you look at North Farmington's path right now, there is a path. I don't know if this team could get in at five and four, um, but we will see. I mean, like, I, I think, you know, there is a slight path, but I just don't know what the strength of schedule North Farmington's played um, could get them in the postseason. Um, Seaholm to me is clearly in. I mean, they are clearly in. I mean, the UD Jesuit win, that's a big deal for them. Um, of course, um, beating Troy, Troy Athens, of course, both the D1 teams. Um, North Farmer can say that too. Um, uh, but, um, when I look at the opportunity for Seaholm, um, I think clearly that UD Jesuit game, that is a big deal. Um, Troy, on the other hand, I don't know if I see a path for them right now. Yes, they sit four and two. Um, I just think when you look at Troy's path, um, you know, Losing North Farmington really hurts them. I know beating Farmington helps them. Um, and then you look at a team like Farmington, who had no problem with Pontiac, um, 49-0. Um, Farmington is an interesting one because, yes, they, they got some key wins. They got some quality wins, but the loss to Troy hurts them. Um, North Farmington, when you look at them record-wise, um, they sit at two and four. I don't know if that will help them. Maybe if North Farmington goes five and four, that could help them. Um, so when I look at the playoff path for Farmington, it's a little bit more murkier than I would say definitely Seaholm. I think Seaholm's definitely in, um, regardless of the schedule. North Farmington's got a, um, they do have a path. Um, Troy, I just don't know if I see a path for them. Um, Troy Athens, I might see a path for them, but they gotta they gotta win out, I think, with Troy Athens. Um, so when I look at the blue division, obviously, you know, clearly the team right now in front of Seaholm. Um, then I think it's Farmington. I mean, even though Troy did lose that game, um, but Seaholm and Farmington, that's gonna be a very interesting game coming up. Um, We'll see how that one goes. Um, that'll be a good test to see. Um, but bottom line is, um, clearly Seaholm's the cream of the crop in that division. Um, the way they did against Troy was really impressive. They were the dominant team. Um, not sure why they wore the all-black, so, but, you know, you got to get Coach um, Jim DeWall and his team a lot of credit. Um, you know, I think, you know, and then when you look at playoff pass, I mean, mentioned Seaholm's already in. Um, Troy, I don't know if I see a pass, even though they're four and two. North, I do see a pass with them. But they got to win out. Farmington, I do see a little bit of a pass for them, um, but I think they got to win out. And then Troy Athens definitely's got to win out. So that's my take on the blue right now. When I look at the division right now, um, you know they're. I mean, you got the Blue Gold Challenge coming up this week and some really interesting matchups there in that one. Um, when you look at the Gold Division, um, I really think that, um, you know, but clearly to me, Seahome's the cream of the crop in that division, clearly. Um, let's go now from the Blue to the Gold. Um, you know, recap on those games, obviously. Um, it's hard for me to describe... Berkeley, you know, I mean, it really is. I mean, the fact that this team has really struggled all year long and what they did to Royal Oak on Friday night at Hurley, you know, it kind of set me back, you know, to when they were, you know, when the, in the last two years and they were very good. So when I look at that score and said, okay, Royal Oak should be the favorite in this game because of the experience. They have the experience. They have the, they have, of course, obviously they had Ellie Finch last week. Um, it was a big time story. I know she was on Channel 7, um, Homecoming Queen, obviously. But 
Berkeley, what they did to Royal Oak was they just dominated them. I mean, that really was it. I mean, the line had a nice game. Um, Sabat Daniels had a nice game. Um, they finally figured some things out a little bit. You know, they held Royal Oak to seven points. That says a lot right there. You know, that really says a lot, especially with the season that they've been having. Um, and it's been a really rough season for the Bears this year. Really has been. Um, but for them to keep the street sign, the Battle of Woodward, um, to keep the street sign out of the year, that's a big deal for them. Even though the season that they've had has been just absolutely just rough for them. Um, when I look at Royal Oak on the flip side here, it's kind of really difficult to describe them because, you know, when you look at obviously you you had the plays of Hudson Seidel back, you had Makai Jenkins, you have of course Ellie Finch up front, um, you know, and then you look at, I mean, like obviously I know Coach Justin Truett had a big time challenge coming into the year, but still this is this is just mind boggling, you know, to I me mean, to see, you know, that this um, that Royal Oak is really you know, they, 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 you know, I, I had some expectations for this team. I mean, I thought they would be pretty good. I mean, I thought they would be, um, but to me, it's clear to me that, you know, with Royal Oak, obviously there has to be a change in mindset, mental mindset. There has to be. I mean, that is the problem I see with the Ravens. Um, even under then coach Ray McMahon, I mean, like, you know, this, the mental mindset just wasn't there. And, you know, and when you look at this year, obviously, you know, you're changing a system up. That's not going to be an easy thing to do. Um, it just hasn't been as easy as it's been. You know, yes, you have, you know, yes, you have the, um, you know, the players. If you coach just to it, you know the players, you know. But the problem is, you know, that mindset, you know, that, you know, you got to change. You got to change that mindset. And, for me, I don't know if Royal Oak has been able to do that. You know, to think that, you know, you know, to me, that I think, you know, they believe, I mean, I'm not being mean here. I'm not putting words in their mouth, but I'm just saying, like, it looks like losing's been tolerable over there. And, you know, it's not. So, when I look at Royal Oak, um, you know, if you're going Justin Truett this offseason, season. You just got to change that mindset, you know, and say, look, you know what I mean? You know, we just lost to Berkeley. We lost to Ferndale. You know, you know, you got, I mean, like, you got, still got Avno on the schedule. I mean, like, this is not acceptable. You know, this is not who we have to be. And, you know, and I think that's been the big problem that Royal Oaks had for the last few years. Even, and I think if you're Coach Justin Truett, you got to change that mindset. I mean, that's obvious. I mean, that is really obvious. You know, and that game and that game really showed in that score was, you know, was the fact that, you know, this was a game that I thought Royal Oak had a good chance to win. They had a great shot to win that game. But at the end, against Berkeley, they had a great shot. I mean, like, you know, Berkeley was really struggling. I mean, coming into the year, I mean, they were really struggling. I mean, you have experience back. I mean, you have a Central Michigan committed running back. I mean, I mean, like, and then you go and play like that. I mean, like, that's something that comes down to mental mindset. That has to change. It obviously does. So, I mean, so we'll see what happens going forward. I mean, Royal Oak, they got Troy on the schedule. They got to play. Um, I mean, like, they still got to play. Um, I think Avondale's on that schedule. I mean, like. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with them. But for me with Royal Oak, something has to change with them. Um, Berkeley on the flip side, you know, got that win. That's a big deal there. Um, kind of wish they had the season that I thought they would. I mean, like, I wish they would have had a better season. But, you know, they've had some games where they should not have lost. Um, so I'm curious to see what the direction will be for the Bears heading into next year. So, you know, the rest of the year and then, of course, heading into next year. So it was a good win for Coach Sean Shields in Berkeley. Um, but, you know, but, you know, show it could have, would have, you know what I mean? But we'll see what happens, what they do the rest of the year. Um, Ferndale and Avondale, this was a game that I really didn't expect. Um, when you really look at this game here, um, to me, does this win say Ferndale's back? I mean, 
I don't know. Um, considering, yeah, Ferndale's had success against the, the league and everything and that, but they have not, you know, fared well against the non-league. And that is, you know, when you look at who they played already, you look at playing Macomb Lance Cruz, you look at playing um, Grand Rapids West Catholic. Grand Rapids West Catholic, you knew it was going to be a very difficult game um, in that front. And you look at Ferndale, obviously a chance to share the gold title. Um, they've clinched at least a share of it. Can clinch it outright with the win against Pontiac um, in week eight. Um, for Ferndale, you know, this was a heck of an accomplishment for them. Now comes the postseason component. Do I think Ferndale makes the playoffs with the schedule they have? <laughs> and that is a big question for me. Royal Oak, uh, with Ferndale, obviously, with Ferndale, they got some wins against some D1 teams. I mean, Royal Oak is, I think Royal Oak's D2. Um, I really think for me with Ferndale, they have to knock off Farmington if they want to have playoff aspirations. Um, I think when you look at Ferndale, yes, they had that tough loss to Troy early in the year. That was a very tough loss. Um, yes, they played Macomb Lance Cruz. Had a very tough loss there. You kind of knew that was going to happen with them against Grand Rapids West Catholic. And that's what happened there. So when I look at Ferndale's postseason hopes, um, they do have a path. Um, now when I look at other teams like Avondale, Avondale I think clearly does, even though I don't think their schedule is as strong as, you know, as in years passes, but when I look at Ferndale, I mean, like, Ferndale clearly has a playoff pass, and that's something, and that's something a lot, you know, I mean, they got experience that matters, but, you know, when you don't do well against non-league competition, that's what's going to happen, you know, then you're going to be fighting for your playoff lives. I mean, heck, even I, I see teams that have seven wins, they're not even safe for the playoffs. I mean, I look at a team like Troy. I don't think Troy's safe when it comes to the playoffs right now. I really don't, you know, because that schedule. I don't think that schedule's good that they're playing right now. Whereas when you look at a team like um, Ferndale, I think the schedule's tough, obviously. You know, Macomb Lance Cruz is a good team. Um, Grand Rapids West Catholic, we know, is definitely a good team. But... I think right now I see a path for Ferndale. You know, and the fact that they're on the verge of winning the gold title, that says a lot. Um, on the flip side, at Avondale, I mean, yes, you know, you're, you're, you sit in a really tough spot right now. I mean, you're 3-3. Three and three. You're 2-1 and one, um, in the division. I mean, you know, you got to look at, okay, your schedule coming up. You close out the year with Warren Mott. Um, you know, I think Mornwood's Tower, you call that the Air West. That's an interesting matchup there. Um, then you have to play, um, then you have to play, um, I mean, you got North Farmington this week. That's a big game for you. That is a big game for you, especially with the way that Avondale, but North Farmington played last week against Troy Athens. That's going to be a challenge for them. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. And then I think they have the cross, uh, they have a non-conference this week, so they have. So when you look at that, when you look at Avondale, you know they got to win out. I think if they want to make the playoffs, so that's something to really look at with Avondale. So if they want to win out, they have to win out, basically. You know, so I'm curious to see that Avondale North Farmington game. That is a big game for both teams there going in that game. Um, Pontiac, you know. You know, it's it's hard to describe with the way it, they've been playing right now. It's tough for them right now. Um, they got a lost 49-0 to Farmington. Um, they got Troy Athens looming this week. Um, you know, you know, for me to say to the kids of Pontiac, just keep playing, keep fighting, keep competing. Um, the wins are going to come. I mean, like if you're Coach Ken Wade, you know, what I mean, the wins are going to come. Um, I know that a lot of people around Pontiac right now are sick and tired of waiting and all that, but I think I think week nine against Garden City, I really, really think that they're going to get their first one of the year. I mean, I, I, I don't trust Garden City. I just don't trust them. Um, but 
I just think that week nine, once that comes around, um, I think the Pontiac will get their first win, and I think we're going to see some significant changes, you know, this off season regarding Pontiac football. Um, they got to be patient. I know, I know, it's rough there, but they just got to be patient. So that's my take on the gold. Um, right now, when I look at it here, I think Ferndale right now has got a path. Right now, they clearly got a pass. Um, Avondale might have one. I mean, it depends where they're at. I think right now they're in Division Three for the postseason. Um, Pontiac, Pontiac, you know, I mean, like, it's going to be tough for them. Um, you know, Royal Oak, I think it's going to be very tough for them. And I think for Berkeley, it's also going to be very tough for them. So, you know, so right now, Ferndale looks to be the cream of the crop in the gold division right now. So that's something to really, really look at heading into the um, final three weeks of the season. So that's something to really look at. Um, let's go to the white now. Um, recapping those games. Um, of course, um, Southfield Arts and Tech, they are on a roll right now. Um, they are clearly the best team in this division. Um, had no issue with Bloomfield Hills, 49-7. to um, they were the dominant team. Um, they've been playing outstanding football and they have found something in their defense that has really, you know, that they found, they've improved on that. They've only given up, you know, they gave up seven points against a good Blue Bay Hills team with a very good quarterback in CJ Jackson. Um, I think when you look at A&T, yes, you have that offense down. You have it down to a T. Isaiah Marshall, you know, he's having a nice year. Um, they are found a rushing attack. The passing game's been outstanding. I mean, you really look at A&T, I mean, like, they are rolling and clicking on all cylinders right now. I mean, that's clearly, clearly what's going on with A&T right now is they are rolling, clicking on all cylinders. Um, second place in the white is a little bit of a log jam. Between Groves, um, between Groves um, and Rochester, and you know when you look at a team like Rochester, Rochester's been playing good football lately. I mean, they play, they've been battle tested. Um, they've really, they've been playing much better. Um, they had a hard fought win against them, Harper Woods last, I mean, like two weeks ago, and then they knocked off a, um, and then of course they knocked off. Um, they had a. Good, big win against Oak Park, twenty six to six. Um, when you really look at Rochester, now you gotta wonder: Does Rochester have a pathway to the playoffs? I mean, they do in a sense. Yes, they played Adams early in the year, but I think that loss to Utica is absolutely killing them right now. I mean, Utica's not necessarily a great team. I mean, they're not a good team, but that loss to Utica absolutely is killing Rochester right now. I mean, there is a path for them. They got to knock off Stony Creek, um, which that'll be a very interesting game. I don't know if Detroit Renaissance will help them. Um, so when you really look at Rochester's path, I mean, they got to knock off Stony Creek. That's the big game for them is that week eight game against Stony. Um, but right now, when I look at Rochester, they got a big, big two weeks looming. I mean, they got Groves. They can win that one. I mean, Groves is a big one for them. Um, and then you have Stony Creek. I mean, those are the two games that I really think if they can win those two games, maybe, 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 maybe they could be a playoff team. Maybe. But right now, they've got, if they don't win those two games, um, then I think their postseason dreams are gone. That's how I view Rochester right now. Um, Groves, you know, when you look at them, um, bounce back win, it was a 15, they had a win against Harper Woods, um, you know, when you look at Groves, obviously, when you look at them, um, they've had to survive some games lately, they've had to survive, um, you know, that's kind of not a good omen, you know, they won 15-12 against Harper Woods, um, when you look at Groves, I mean, like, there's still some warning signs with them. Um, yes, they got Rochester Lubin coming up. Um, I know they close out the year with Seaholm. That's going to be a heck of a game between those two. Um, 
But to me, I think there's some danger signs surrounding Groves. I mean, I mean, yes, that win against North Farmington, I think it's going to be a good, it's a good one for them right now. But, you know, that loss of Oxford's killing them right now. And then you look at, but Oxford's playing a really tough schedule in the red. Um, then they were blown up by A&T. That's a big deal right there. Um, but the win against Harper Woods, they needed that win. They needed that win for competence sake. If they would not, if they didn't get that, if they lost that game to Harper Woods, then, you know, then that, then I thought their playoff hopes would be shot, you know, but there is still a pathway for Groves. I think for them, they have to win out. Um, that's just my opinion. When you look at the strength of schedule component looming for them, um, they have to win out. And I think clearly if they can win out, then I think, you know, they could be a postseason team. So, you know, so that's what I'm seeing right now with Groves um, when it comes to playoffs right now. Harper Woods, you know, I mean, I don't know if I see a pathway right now for them. I, I just don't know if I see one for Coach Jacob Oden, this team, for Rob Oden, this team. Um, had some tough losses, obviously, by, um, you know, they had that tough, um, I mean, by nine points. I mean, you lose a tough one to Rochester, 18-12. And then you lose 115-12, you know. So, that's life in the OAA for you. I mean, you know every week you're going to get a dogfight. Week in, week out. And you look at Harper Woods right now. It doesn't look good for them right now. It doesn't look good for the Pioneers. And for their postseason hopes. It really doesn't. And the fact of the matter is, with Harper Woods, bottom line is, you know, you know, when you, the OA is a very difficult league. It is a very, very difficult league. And, you know, they're seeing it how, how life in the OA is right now. And you really look at Harper Woods right now. I mean, like, they're in some trouble right now. They really are. So we'll see what happens with them. But it things don't look good right now for the Pioneers postseason-wise. Um... Bloomfield Hills, um, yes, they got that win against Oak Park. That was a big deal. But last week, um, 49-7 to A&T. Um, I kind of knew it was coming. Um, didn't think that it would be, um, you know, like that. And yes, the postseason hopes are gone. But, you know, for, for Bloomfield Hills, it's just getting better. Um, focusing on the next week. Getting better each play. That's how I'm viewing it right now at Bloomfield Hills. Um, you know, I mean, they it was going to be a long year for them. Um, it was going to be a rough year. Um, and, you know, for them, you know, being in the white, you know what I mean? Being up in a division, you know, when you have some really good teams in that division, it's going to be a challenge. And it and it's already proven that for Bloomfield Hills. So, Really, right now, I just think for them, you know, it's just playing on and getting better each each play and each week um, for them right now. Um, and see what these final three games give you. Um, and then there's Oak Park. Um, you know, when I look at Oak Park, um, tough loss to Rochester, 26-6. Um, your schedule is brutal to close out the year. You got, you got A&T this week. Then you have Orchard Lake, St. Mary's next week. And then you got Clarkston. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. That's going to be tough. That is very difficult. You know? And if you're Coach Greg Carter, that is... Oh, you're staring at 0-9 right now. You really are staring at 0-9. Um, I just don't know if I see... This team, you know, you know they're gonna ha they're they're in the same boat as Bloomfield Hills. They have to focus on getting better each play, getting better on them, um, you know, addressing the discipline. They got to address a lot of things. Um, but it's a difficult, difficult path for Oak Park. It really is for them. Um, so when I really look at the white as a whole right now, I mean. A and T is clearly the team in the white right now. They are clearly the team. Um, they've clinched at least a share of the white title. Um, but when you look at Groves and Rochester right now, are two and three right now. 
Um, Harper Woods is clearly four. Bloomby Hills is five, and Oak Park is six. Um, that's what I'm seeing right now. I think A and T is clearly a lock for the playoffs, even though they got a tough schedule to close out. Um, they, yeah, they got Oak Park this week. They got West Bloomfield next week, and then they close out the year with um, River Rouge, and that's going to be very difficult there. Um, Rochester, I don't know if I see a postseason path unless they win their their first two games. Um, that Utica game is absolutely killing them. Groves, um, there is a path for them to get in the postseason, obviously. Harper Woods, I don't see really much of a pass. Um, and then they got them. Um, and then, of course, with um, Bloomfield Hills and um, Oak Park, I just don't see a playoff path for neither of those teams right now. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Oak Park may be strength of schedule. I mean, because they're playing a very vicious schedule. So we'll see what happens going forward with them. Um, let's go to the red now. Um, when you look at, obviously, West Bloomfield, um, Preston 41-14 went against Lake Orion. Um, Samaj Morgan had a... Two touchdown passes and a pick six return for a touchdown. Um, I really, you know, they were out Raekwon Nance who um, hurt his finger. He's out for the um, rest of the regular season. Um, West Bloomfield looks fine. I mean, they look fine. I mean, Kenny Jones, he played well in that game. Um, you know, for me, it's West Bloomfield clearly has a playoff path, obviously. Um, they got Southie Darson Tech next week. They got... Um, they got, and then they got Utica Eisenhower in two weeks. That'll be very interesting to see what happens there in that game. Um, but West Bloomfield right now, they're fine. I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, do I think are they in danger of postseason? No, I think they're going to be fine. Um, Adams, same way. Um, Preston, 33-7 win against Oxford. Um, postseason's basically a lock for them, like West Bloomfield. Um but, I mean, they're starting to roll right now in that division. Clarkston, um, they uh, they won 28-14 against Stony Creek. Um, Ethan Clark had a big game there. Bounced back after what happened against Oxford. Um, obviously, when you look at um, Clarkston defensively, I really haven't been impressed with them defensively. Even though numbers say otherwise. But I still think defensively, Clarkston's got some issues that they got to address. Um then it gets really interesting when you look at the next three teams. You got Lake Orion, Oxford, and Stony Creek. Um, Lake Orion first. Um, the Dragons had a really tough game against West Bloomfield, um, following 41-14. I think when you look at Lake Orion, um, they have to settle on a quarterback. They really have to. I mean... To me, and this is my own opinion, I think Tristan Hill has to be your quarterback because he gives you that he gives you that dimension of the arp, of the run of the uh, of a run pass option guy. You know that's really what it is with Lake Orion. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at the problems that they've had, um, it kind of in that game against West Bluebird, you kind of saw the game against Utica Eisenhower and the game against Rochester Adams come back and affect them. And that's what happened that game. You know, they got within 35 nothing. You know, they were down 35 nothing, And, you know, and, you know, had running clock entry. That's not Lake Orion at all. It really isn't. Um, defensively, really struggled all night as well in that game. Um, but there is a path for them to the playoffs. And they have to win either... They, I think for me with them, um, if they win two of the three, I think they will be in because that schedule is absolutely brutal. I mean, you still got to play Clarkston this week. You have North Farmington next week. North Farmington just got their quarterback back in Ryan Shelby. Um, and then you have Celine, obviously, with C.J. Carr. Um, they got a very good wide receiver as well. Um, defensively, but I don't know. You know, with the SEC, obviously, you know, the SEC is not necessarily, you know, like the OAA. And then celine has got to make that travel up M24, I-75 to Lake Orion. That's a difficult, difficult travel in the heart of rush hour. Um, just a difficult travel. Um, but we'll see. I mean, Celine's rolling right now. Um, you have Clarkson there finding their identity. 
um, offensively, especially with the attack that they have with Mike Hine and um, Ethan Clark, especially at running back. Um, defensively, I got concerns with Clarkson. Um, but if you're like Orion, you just got to find yourself. You just got to find what is your identity. You know, yes, it's homecoming this week for them. But, you know, if I'm them, you know, I'm just saying, you know, we got to win. We got to win this game. We got to just like, you know, you know, you just got a clear mind of everything. If you're Lake Orion, you just got a clear mind of everything. I mean, that's how I view it with them is, you know, yes, it's a tough week. It's homecoming week. It's your arch rival, but you got a clear mind. I mean, that's going to be that. You just got to forget the West Bloomfield game, you know, get those things, you know, get those negative issues out. You know what I mean? Out of the way and just, you know, in, you can fix yourself. I mean, obviously, you know, you can fix yourself. I mean, like, you know, this is a fixable thing. If you're Coach Chris Bell, you can fix this. You know, obviously, but clearly to me, when I look at the Dragons, you have to win out. Um, two or three is safe. If you win out, I mean, that makes you, if you win out, you're definitely a playoff team for sure. Um, Oxford, you know, I, I, it's a tough path for them. I just don't know if I see a pathway for them. Um, because the schedule gets really tough. You got them, um, you know, you got Chippewa Valley to close out the year. Um, you got West Bloomfield this week. That's going to be very difficult. And then you have Bloomfield Hills. Um, so when you really look at it here, um, you know, it's going to be tough for them. I mean, it's going to be really, really difficult for them to see what happens in this game. Um, we'll see what happens. So, but clearly with Oxford, um, it's a very difficult difficult path going forward for them. Um, it's going to be a real challenge for them to see what happens where they're at. Um, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with them going forward. Um, and then there's Stony Creek. I mean, Stony Creek is a lot like Lake Orion right now. Both teams sit 3-3. Three and three. Um, You know, Lake Orion's got the head-to-head tiebreaker. Um, and I think they played a much tougher schedule. I think Lake Orion has. Um, but when you look at Stony Creek's path, you got Adams, then you have to play, um, you have Detroit Renaissance, uh, cl- uh, sorry, then you have um, New Baltimore Anchor Bay to close out the year, um, then you have Rochester, you know, so there is some opportunity for Stony Creek, I mean, but they've got to knock off their city rivals, that's that's clearly honesty right there. Um, Rochester's problem is the city rivals, it's the same problem. So when I look at Stony Creek, you know, obviously, yes, John Fogler back, that's a big deal. Um, that is a huge deal that he's back. A nice game against Clarkston. Um, but when I look at Stony Creek's road to the postseason, to me, you know, when I look at describing them and Lake Orion's path, I think Stony Creek has to win out or maybe go two or three also like Lake Orion. I mean, Stony Creek and Lake Orion, very similar spots right now. But I think right now, Lake Orion, with the way that schedule, they played a tougher schedule than Stony Creek has. But if both teams win two or three, then I think both teams are playoff teams. I think Stony Creek, if they win two of the next three, is a playoff team. If they beat Adams, they're in the playoffs. That's how I view it. And obviously, with both teams, you know, with Stony Creek, you know, they have to they have to win a game. You know, obviously, two or three for them. I think it's confidence for them. So, and it's very doable for Coach Nick Merle and his team. So, when you really look at it, um, going from the entire red, obviously, when you look at the postseason, I think that Clarkston, Adams, and West Bloomfield are locks. Two or three, I think Lake Orion and Stony. I think Lake Orion has a better chance um, if they if they to get in the postseason. They win two of the next three, um, and then if and then Stony Creek, I don't say they would necessarily would have to win out, but it would be nice. But two or three for Stony would make would make it would make some sense for them. But I really think if if there's a team that needs to win two or three right now in that situation, it's Lake Orion. And then Oxford, I just don't know if I see a path for them getting the postseason um, with the schedule coming up. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens going forward. Um, in the red, um, but clearly right now, um, you know, right now when I look at the division, 
Um, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, so I'm just trying to give you like a playoff playoff position where everybody's at um, right now, in my own opinion. So we'll see what happens going forward. Okay, now let's go to the Week 7 games. Um, obviously, we mentioned earlier in the pod, um, we have red versus... We have red versus... Um, you know, we have red and white having their final weeks of the year um, of league play. And then you have red... And then, of course, you have the blue-gold crossover, which is going to be very interesting. Of course, the... Um, all the um the the gold host this this week, so we'll see what happens here. Of course, we'll go to our first game here. Um, we got Ferndale taking on Farmington. This is going to be an interesting game because of the fact that you have Ferndale just shared the gold title with um with um clinch at least a share of the gold title. Um. This is an interesting... Farmington features a really good quarterback in Dominic Pesci. You have Cam Petaway at running back. Ferndale has a lot of their team back. This is going to be an interesting game over at Ferndale. But I think Farmington right now, I have a lot more confidence with them right now. Despite Ferndale winning last week against Avondale, they struggle against non-league teams. Um, if they can break through and win this game, we'll see what happens. But when I look at this game on paper, I've got to take Farmington over Ferndale here, here in this one. Um, the experience, it I mean, like both sides, but when you look at clearly, you know, I just don't trust Ferndale non-league right now with the way that they're playing right now. I, I'm going to take the um, Falcons over the Eagles in that one. Um, Troy Athens at Pontiac. Um... This is going to be a tough task for Pontiac. Um, Troy Atten's coming off a really tough loss in North Farmington. Um, I just think when I look at this matchup here, um, you know, can Davion Hall break through against Troy Atten's defense? I mean, like, it can happen. I think Pontiac's going to score some points in this game. Do I think are they going to beat Troy Atten's? Probably not. Um, I think the Asher brothers are going to have a big game. Um, we'll see what happens there, but I, I got Troy Athens um, rolling in this game over Pontiac. It'll be really interesting to see what happens there going forward there in that one. Um, then we got um, Royal Oak and Troy. Um, both teams are coming off really humbling losses. I mean, Royal Oak lost to Berkeley. Troy was just absolutely demolished by Seaholm. Um, yes, on paper, it looks very flashy with the matchups. Um, but when I look at, I, I don't trust Troy's offense in this game. I really don't trust Royal Oak in this game. So it's kind of hard for me to get to trust both teams in this game. Troy's defense was absolutely just embarrassed by Seahol. Royal Oaks got got two players in, in Hudson Seidel and Makai Jenkins. I don't know where Royal Oaks' mental mindset is in this game. I really don't know where it's at. Troy, you know, with them, I just don't know if I can trust them offensively. I mean, they have really struggled offensively all season long. And, you know, there was some time, you know, they've relied on their defense and their special teams to carry them in games. You look at that Farmington game. They relied on a punt return for a touchdown and a couple field goals from Zach Pinoza. I mean, yes, your defense has been outstanding until last week. So when I, and then Royal Oak, you know, I just don't get Royal Oak. I just don't get them. I really don't. So when I look at this game on paper, everything favors Troy. It really does. But when I look at this game, could Royal Oak upset Troy? Absolutely they can. They can absolutely upset them. The key to this game is, can Royal Oak find the metal mindset to do it? You have the offensive line to do it. You have the running back to do it. The key is Hudson Seidel. 
Sido plays well. They got a chance to upset Troy. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. Because I think Darius Whiteside has a big game here. I think Troy's defense bounces back. They're at home. Oh, no, it's at Royal Oak. Um, You know, Troy's going to travel well. It's only a short trip with them for them. It can just take long wake to Crooks. And then and then go, and then take Crooks to Lexington Boulevard. So I've got Troy winning this game. It's gonna be I don't I think maybe two scores. But Royal definitely had the chance to win this game. They definitely do. So we'll see what happens in that game. We will definitely see. But I got Troy winning that game. Avondale, Avondale and North Farmington. Ryan Shelby's back. That says something right there. He is back. And it's going to be a tough matchup for um for um the Yellow Jackets, especially with the way they played against Ferndale. Ferndale's defense shut down Jake Herzog. That says something right there. Shut down Tyler Herzog, my bad. Apologies. Um, so North Farmington... They they found something when Ryan Shelby came back. Shelby had a nice game against Troy Athens. He had a nice game. But that still doesn't solve their defensive issues. North Farmington has to win out. So does Avondale, in my opinion. So when I really look at this game here on paper, I think when you look at this game here, I'm going to go the Raiders here. I'm going to go North Farmington goes into Dick Byfield Field and beat Avondale. I mean... Just with the experience alone, I mean, I think Shelby has a big game. Now, yes, Avondale's got athletes. That's obvious. But it comes down to the mental mindset. It really does. So I'm going to take the yellow, I'm going to take the Raiders over the Yellow Jackets because of the mental mindset. That's how I'm seeing it. And then you have Berkeley taking on Seaholm. Berkeley, you know, this was a game I was circling on my calendar because I knew both teams would be, you know, I thought both teams would be good. Seahome is as good as advertised. They are as good as advertised. Berkeley's the one I've been mostly disappointed with. Hopefully the game with Royal Oak must have turned, turned their season around. Maybe. Just maybe. If Berkeley were to upset Seahome, then who knows? What would have happened? But the fact that early on week one, when they lost to Milan, 47 now Milan is now struggling. They're on the verge of having their first losing season in a long time. So when you look at Milan, you know, that game with Milan, you know, that's a bad loss for Berkeley. That's a really bad loss for them. When you look at Seahome, Seahome's absolutely rolling right now. They are rolling and taking names. You know, you look at their final three games. They got to play. They have this game this week with Berkeley. Then they have Farmington. And then they have Groves. So when we look at Seaholm, they're rolling people right now. They just put 52 on Troy. They just did that. So when you look at this game here on paper, you know, you say, oh, Seaholm's got a good chance here. See, Berkeley's got a good line. Really good line. It comes down to quarterback play with me when it describes the Bears. If the quarterback if the quarterback play is the key, if they can figure it out quarterback-wise, then who knows? Could this be a game? Maybe. I've got Seahome in this game because of the Kinney brothers. Because of Robbins. I think they're going to have big games like they did last week against Troy. I think that they're going to be, I, I really think, you know, they're the momentum that they've been building ever since the 1-8 and eight year they had last year. And I think Seaholm is going to be a team that's on a mission. They're going to go in there. They're going to go into Hurley. And I think they're going to go in there and just dominate Berkeley. And it's going to be tough. So we'll see what happens in that one going forward. But I got Seaholm there. So when I look at clearly the picks this week, I've got basically a clean blue sweep. 
You know, that's what it is right now. I got, you know, clean blue sweep over the gold this week. So we'll see what happens in heading forward in those games this week. Um, let's go to the white. Um, a and in Oak Park. Um, one team's rolling right now, sitting real com comfy right now. Adams. One is sitting at him at five and one. The other one is sitting at zero and six. Um, Oak Park has really struggled all season. They really have. A and T is on a mission right now. Could this be a final tune-up for A and T against Oak Park before the final two week before the final two weeks when they have to play West Bloomfield and um, River Rouge? And both those games for Southfield will be at home, though, for them. That'll, that'll help them out. But this game in Night Valley, this is going to be really interesting. Um, I, I really think a and is going to roll in this one. Um, don't be surprised if a and puts over 40 against Oak Park. Um, I mean, Oak Park, I, I, I see Oak Park scoring some points in this game. I really do. Um, because... Like, still, I, I just don't know if I could trust A&T right now with their defense. I just don't know if I could trust them right now. Um, but I think A&T will win this game pretty convincingly over Oak Park. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens there um, for the final two weeks for A&T. But I, I like them this week against Oak Park. Um, Harper Woods at Bloomfield Hills. Um, this one's interesting. Because both these teams have really been struggling. Um, both these teams have playmakers. Um, the games at Bloomfield Hills, um, everybody says, you know, with Bloomfield Hills, you know, with them, I mean, like, um, I don't know if I can trust Bloomfield Hills in this game. I really don't know if I can. Um, I like Harper Woods in this game. I really do. Because I think Harper Woods... I don't trust Bloomby Hills defensively. I think Harper Woods is Harper Woods offensively has not been very good lately. Twelve points in the last two games, you know, twenty four points in the last two games. That's not good. Um, defensively, they've been there. They've they've been there. Um, but if Harper Woods can get a win like this against Bloomby Hills, that says something right there. And their in their game against Oak Park. They had to score 53 points just to beat Oak Park. Um, but Oak Park scored 40. Do I see it here? Do I see Bloomy Hills possibly scoring 40 against Harper Woods? Probably not. But I really like Harper Woods in this game. But I think they're going to score less than 53. If they have to score more than 53, I'd be shocked. So we'll see what happens in that one. I mean, but I like Harper Woods in that one at Bloomfield Hills. The big one in the white is Rochester and Groves. Oh, Groves at Rochester. This is a big one for both teams. Um, this one's interesting. It's a clash of... It's a, both teams love to run the ball. I mean, Grant Calgano at running back for Rochester. Um, Groves has got a really nice nice running rushing attack as well. Um, this game here... I, I Rochester's got more playmakers, I think, on both sides. Groves can slow it down. They got a good quarterback in Kane Hardy. Um, in this game here, I'm going to take the team I trust right now the most and right now, and that's Rochester. Um, I just think offensively, they got more weapons. Um, even the line has been getting better each week. Um, last two weeks, Rochester's been playing really good football. So, why not keep the trend there? Um... I'm going to take the Falcons over the, um, I'm going to take the Blue Falcons over the Green Falcons this week. Of course, both teams are named Falcons. Um, but I'm going to take Rochester here. I just think because of the quarterback play with Alex Blaino at quarterback. Um, you got Bolden at wide receiver. Um, Greg Calcano at running back. Um, I just, I really like where they're at right now. Groves, yes, they're a good team. But I just really think that Rochester, the way that they're playing right now, last two weeks have been on a tear. Um, knowing they need to win out. Um, 
I really like Groves and I like Rochester in that game and knock off Groves. So we'll see what happens there going forward in that game there. Um, let's go now from the white to the red. Um, you got Oxford at West Bluefield. <sighs> this is going to be a tough, t tall order for Oxford. <laughs> I mean, what West Bloomfield did to Lake Orion, which is absolutely insane. Um, and to do that without Raekwon Nance. And Samaj Morgan is the real dealer. He really is. Kenny Jones is the real dealer. Um, you know, I mean... It's going to be a tall task for Oxford. The only way Oxford's got a chance against West Bloomfield is that they really, really slow the game down and play absolute conservative football. That's the only chance Oxford's got against West Bloomfield. Do I see it happening? No. Because West Bloomfield's too explosive. Even without Raekwon Nance, who's out with a finger injury. Even without Raekwon Nance. I just think that West Bloomfield right now... They're, they had that bounce back win against Lake Orion. Um, I just think that the Lakers, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. It's a tall task for Oxford. Um, you know, and Oxford, and Oxford is also traveling too down to the swamp. So that's going to be a really difficult task for Oxford um, going down there to um, the swamp. And, you know, so I really like West Bluefield pretty convincingly over Oxford. Um, Mike Stone's going to be saying a lot of touchdown Lakers, you know, this week in that game against Oxford. Um, so it's going to be a tall task come for Oxford. So we'll see what happens there. I really, but West Bluefield pretty convincingly over Oxford. So we'll see what happens there in that one. Um, Stony Creek at Adams. Um, like I said, it's another tall task for Stony Creek. Um, taking on Adams team that is, Rolling on all cylinders right now. Um, you know, they're coming off really a strong performance against Oxford. Um, Stony Creek, for them, the only chance they have against Adams is they can slow the game down. Um, I'm going to take the Highlanders over the um, Cougars in this one here pretty convincingly. Um, it's going to be a very, very tall task in that game for um, Stony Creek, especially making the short trip off Tinkin Road. Um, to go over to um, Adams Road. So that'll be a very tall task um, going forward there for Stony Creek. Um, and then there's Lake Orion and Clarkson. This is homecoming for Lake Orion this week. Um, I don't know where Lake Orion is at after that game with West Bluefield. Um, they truly did not play well last week. I mean, is their problems fixable? Yes. Um, I think for them, they've got to, you got to lay the distractions. You've got to get rid of the distractions, you know, for them. Um, it's a tall order for them because it's homecoming for them. Um, for Lake Orion to win this game against Clarkson, they've got to play, you know, they got to slow it down. They got to at least, you know, I am very curious to see Clarkson's defense in this game. Because Lake Orion can be very explosive offensively. They can be. Um, defensively, how does Lake Orion match up? I mean, defensively, you know, for Lake Orion against Clarkston, how do they match up with Ethan Clark? Considering last year, Clarkston put 50 on Lake Orion. Um, that should be a motivator for the Dragons right there. Um, I think it will be. Um, can the, I mean, Clarkson's defense is, I mean, Clarkson offensively, they rely a lot on Mike Hine and, um, Ethan Clark. I know Cole Jarvis is a solid wide receiver as well. Um, Desmond Steffens, um, will play both ways as well. Um, obviously you got the line play with Cole Dillinger. Um, but when I look at this game here, Lake Orion, if Billy Roberson has the games that he's known to have, which is monster games, if Lake Warren can find consistent in the passing game, I think they have a chance here. All right, now I'm going to sign off here. I'll make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm signing off here. I'm Sammy Tamina here. Take care. God bless and see you all next week. God bless and see you next week.